last week, the thing that I had talked about was the guilt I have around if I'm not constantly working. So um, even during regular business hours that I set for myself, even during a lunch break, or I usually take a nap during the middle of the day, I'll still do it, but I'll feel really guilty during it. And I've noticed how that's affecting uh, my productivity and how that's sort of this fast route to burnout that I don't want to reach. So yeah, um, totally. what I did was um, I tried uh, doing, well, one, not scheduling a ton of things on my calendar that I'm just gonna move later. And it builds this endless backlog of things to do, yeah. um, which was nice because it took off a lot of pressure the second thing I did was instead of um, trying to get myself to work three straight hours in the morning, I just planned what I'm going to be working um, the first 30 minutes of the day. And that worked nicely too. And then okay. the third thing that I sort of have a question around was the correction I was trying to do around my team wanting me to needing to work more. I should always be working or that, you know, taking breaks are for slackers. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that's the thing is what I'll focus in on is not so much the structure around it, but the actual correction. I think that would be helpful. So basically you identified the thought, I need to work more. Um, are you sure it's not like a more mean thought? Because to, so guilt's a way whenever you act, it's like whenever you act in a way outside of your values. And so your teen is probably being a little harsher than I need to work more. I'm wondering if it's more like you're a slacker or taking yeah. breaks with slackers that you've written down. What do you hear in your head when it's actually occurring? Do you know? Um, yeah, it's either you're a slacker or you're lazy. Okay, yeah, that sounds more like what the team would say to you. So you are a slacker, not really, I'm just writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're lazy. So those probably go together. You could kind of group them together. So what you would be correcting would be you're a slacker and you're lazy. Um, and I would just correct the entire thing, like both portions. I wouldn't break it up. I think you could do one correction for both of those. And that's going to be perfect uh, team. So essentially, you want to move your team from perfect to realistic. So that's where it fits in the matrix. So essentially, what you see, you know, perfect is in the team columns. So you're going to be wanting to move her to realistic. So the first thing is, is to capture the language, which you did. So essentially, you know, you want to go ahead and write down, you're a slacker, you're lazy. And then your context is whenever you're not working or whenever you're just taking a break, like kind of how does it operate? I'd say it's both, okay. but more, more during, like, it would happen more during regular business hours. I probably wouldn't feel this at nighttime. Okay. So it's just during the day, like when you're supposed to be working. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So... We're just going to make your context when you're supposed to be working. And I'm writing it all down because it's easier for me if I write it down. So bear with me. All right. So let's see at your notes that I have what you already said. Evidence is twofold. My dad was always in a hurry to get the day started. Okay. So you're moving into kind of your historical data. Mm -hmm. um, did anyone ever call you a slacker or tell uh you that you're lazy? So my mom would call us lazy bums if we were just like hanging on the couch watching TV, even if it was summer. But also more recently, I think especially working at startups, you know, if you left work at 5 p.m., people would say, oh, yeah, you're a slacker. You're like you're leaving already. It's early. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I mean, so your historical data for this correction is going to be more likely what your mom said about lazy bums. And then you have something here about your dad was always in a hurry. I think really it feels like it's really coming from mom. Yeah. Actually. And then, you know, this is just getting recapitulated at work in a startup. That's, the, I mean, it's not that you're not picking up a little bit of shame maybe from the people at work, but your historical data is going to be your mom because it's summer. You're supposed to be relaxing or something. Um, and so essentially being shamed for being at rest is what's occurring. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to identify your historical data as mom calling you a lazy bum anytime you were actually supposed to be resting, you know. That's what we're supposed to be doing in the summer. Yeah. Um, so, and then you went into some advice for the team. Just because you're not working doesn't mean she doesn't love you. Okay, so that's you kind of like relating it to the historical data. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's sort of where I got stuck was the advice. I think that's what it is, but it felt like something's missing. I would say, you know, the, the part that you have right here that says 
that has more to do with mom than it does you. I would say that's something that you would definitely talk with her about when it comes to addressing the historical data. Um, and then this one here, it's healthy to take breaks and to relax. So, you know, you're giving some advice essentially, right, in a correction. So you're going to be giving that advice to your team. So is there any other, the thing about just because you're not working doesn't mean she doesn't love you. That's a little, I don't know that that's really related as much. It's kind of just thrown in there all of a sudden. Now, it doesn't mean you're not getting a window into your child feeling like, oh, I'm being judged by my mom, whenever she would say that to me. Um, and that can be kind of the defective portion of this. Because, you know, we, we identified it's about own perfect in the team, but there is some defective component happening with your child or the team wouldn't show up and start doing what she's doing, trying mm -hmm. to protect you. So you want to work with your team first and I wouldn't make it too fancy. It's just kind of like, you know, you want to write the correction about your slack or you're lazy, you're lazy. And then essentially move into your historical data about your mom calling you lazy bums and then be like, hey, uh, it, this was more about mom. You were supposed to be taking a break. It's okay to take breaks. In other words, it's a little bit like mom was wrong. Yeah. And, and it's okay to do that. And then you're just gonna dethrone her and be like, you know, I'll be in charge from now on when it comes to when we rest and take breaks. So that's gonna give you some relief with it, an ability to step in, but you're gonna need to do the child portion of this as well. So it may be, the sim it may be similar language like where your child is the defective component. Um, I'm not sure. Do you have any idea kind of what maybe is going on with your child and feeling defective? Do you hear any language in your head or is it just teen stuff at this point? Um, definitely, yes. The way I think it is, is the child is feeling um, less than or like it's feeling sort of like a failure because they're not working hard yeah. enough. So I'm defective and broken because I'm not working. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is, that does have more to do with the mom piece about love, like where you're feeling unloved, but it does feel a little like it's kind of stuck in there still. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, but you want to do the teen correction first and then you want to see what shows up because when you do the teen correction, if you do a pretty good job at it, you should get a result. You'll feel a release and then you're going to feel a little bit worse. So what's going to happen is the defective is going to get larger. And that's because you are going to be removing the team who's protecting that child uh, by kind of being mean to you and being like, hey, you're a lazy bum. In other words, if you're making a link with love, the child may be feeling unloved by your mom when she acted that way. And so it may feel a little bit worse before you do the child correction. So I'm not trying to make it like, ooh, or anything like that. It's just know that if you write a good correction for this thought, you're a slacker, you're lazy, when you're taking a break is how I would, that's like how I would frame the correction. But when you do that, you may end up feeling more defective. In fact, you should, you should yeah. have a little bit of that. Come I up. already do a little bit. You haven't gone through this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So having worked through it a little bit, I still yeah. think that you should go and do the team correction based on this exact language. You're a slacker. You're lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that was missing for sure. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference, you know, because when we capture the triggering language, if it's very specific, like, you know, really try to be like, what are, what is my team telling me in these moments? What I hear in my head, it really kind of sets the stage for the whole correction that, you know, goes after it. So redo the teen one, especially because it's already real triggered. You want to go ahead and do that one first. And then you don't have to wait, just move right over to the child who's feeling defective because she was taking breaks. Okay. And then, so correcting both should give you the result you're looking for. And then maybe next week, because I'm going to be on this call next week, sans cold, Lord willing, um, <laughs> then you'll be able to kind of go over that with us, what happened with the child. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. That gives a lot of clarity. And okay. yeah, I'll definitely do that before then. Okay. Very good. Thanks Very so much. Good.